Okay. So in this module, นะครับ it is the uh, managing system implementation. This module, what do we have to talk about? นะครับ I will talk about the concept of um. Hang on. I'll talk about the concept of system im implementation. That is another phase that you need to have. นะครับ Just hang on. In this one, นะครับ Um, we will talk about the the software quality assurance, นะครับ and software engineering, นะครับ Apart from that one, we will talk about application development process for structured, for object oriented, and for agile methods, นะครับ We will talk about the unit tests, integration tests, and system testing, นะครับ Because whenever we finish um, developing the source code, นะครับ For information system, we have to pass the testing as well. And the testing is not just done by the programmer him or herself, but you have to let the um, users, นะครับ To help testing as well. So that's why we have different um, testing levels, นะครับ And you must be able to dis differentiate between programs, system operations, and user documentation. นะครับ um, You'll be able to list the main step in system installation and evaluation, and also develop the training plans for various users group and compare in-house and outside training, as well as describe the effective training techniques. Later on, we will talk about data conversion and changeover methods. And after that, we also have the um, post implementation evaluation that you have to know, and the final report to the management. นะครับ So in this um, in this module, นะครับ This is system implementation module. Now we move on to a next phase already. This is the fourth. Um, this is the fourth phase of the five phase in the um, system development life cycle. นะครับ This is system system implementation. นะครับ Um, the system implementation includes application development, นะครับ documentation, testing, training, data conversion and system change over, นะครับ So at the end of this phase, the deliverable of this phase is the completely functioning information system that is ready to be launched to the um users, นะครับ So when you have to design the system, นะครับ In the previous phase, the spec from the system design will serve as a blueprint for this phase, for constructing the new information systems. So once we start this phase, the first task of this phase is the application developments, or coding, or coding. Before a changeover can occur, a changeover means that when you just like um, move from the old system, นะครับ from S E system to B to B system, นะครับ this is changeover. The system must be tested and documented carefully, นะครับ Don't move to the new system without testing and without documenting, because, นะครับ If you are a programmer, you may say that I don't want program, I don't want documents. But your users need it. Users must be trained as well. Don't let them use the real system without training. And also, before they can use the the new system, existing data from the current system must be converted to the new system. A formal evaluation of the results. Take place as a part of the final report to management, because the management would like to know what's going on, นะครับ For the new system, is it good or not, นะครับ Um, are there any problems that might take place, or are there any problems that happened already, นะครับ So, the things that you have to know while you are developing the information system, นะครับ Or you are coding the system is that. The software, นะครับ All the programs that you are developing must have the quality insurance, นะครับ Software engineering is a is one technique that we use for the software quality assurance. Um, we may have like many models that you can just like um learn more, นะครับ In the in the future when you have to just like do the software quality assurance, we have capability maturity model or CMM model, นะครับ 
Capability Maturity Model Integration or CMMI model and process improvement. So these models or these techniques tracks on organization's process using five maturity layers that are initial, managed, defined, qualitatively managed, and optimizing. This one you will learn more if you just like take the course like software engineering course. So for the software um quality in um software quality assurance, I have some of the software, especially if you would like to sell your software and have as the standard software for like um doing some tasks, for example, some of you in the future have may just like develop a cloud-based software for the accounting information system, something like that. Like some of your seniors, when they graduated already, right now they open their um, company that develop the cloud-based accounting system and sell to lots of people. In order to make your customers to trust on your software, if it is the large scale software, you may use the ISO standard in order to um, be the standard of your software implementation. ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. Many firms have seek assurance that software system will meet rigid quality standards. So the standard of ISO that we use to, um, to certify for the, uh, the software is like ISO 90003, year 2004. ISO requires a specific development plan and also you need the consultant in order to check for the ISO for the software as well. Some of you in the future, you might be set up your company as a consulting company for the ISO standard of software development. So for the application development, the objective of the application development is to translate the design into the program and code modules that will function properly. So that means the programmers, when you have to develop your code, don't change any requirements or design by yourself. If you think that the design is not good or there are something wrong with the design, don't change it by yourself. You go back to the system analyst who prepare the design document for you. So ask them that, okay, this part is wrong. You don't understand this, what this, um, how this part just like um, come to these values. You have to ask them. Then they have to clarify to you. If they can't clarify, they have to go to see their end users by, I'm sorry, they have to go to see the users by themselves and then they have to just like solve the problem. After that, the programmers will receive and acknowledge the correct design from the system analyst only. Don't, don't just like make a decision by yourself. And if you are a senior um, system analyst already, you have to tell the programmers as well that, okay, when you code the program, do not change any requirements or the design by yourself. If you have any problems, just come back to ask me something like that. So um, when you have to develop the applications, you have to review the system design. Uh -huh. um, so for reviewing the system design, the task produce an overall design and a plan for physical implementation. Because when you have like seen the design already, uh -huh. Assume that the um, system analyst tells you that, okay, you have to finish this part within three days. But you found that, okay, this one is too difficult. You can't finish it in two, um, three days as they plan. Then you have to talk to the system analyst that this part, okay, normally we have to spend at least five days uh, for the level of the difficulties of the system like this. Uh, so you have to discuss with them. After that, uh, we talk about the application development task. For application development tasks, as we learn from the very beginning modules, 
we talk about traditional methods นะครับ that is waterfall model we talk about agile methods นะครับ so in this case if you would like to develop นะครับ your programs by using traditional methods we start by reviewing documentation from prior SDLC phases that is from the design phase first and creating a set of program designs at this point นะครับ cost coding and testing tasks begin นะครับ while in agile methods นะครับ if you use um if you implement um your information system by agile methods you must have the intense communication and collaboration um with the IT team and the users or the customers because actually for the agile methods um everyone work together นะครับ Um, including system analysts, programmers, and users. Right? So you have to talk to them. Right? Objective is to create system through an iterative process. Because the agile method, we just like do it small, but we do it repeatedly until it's bigger and bigger and becomes the full operational system. Right? So when we have to use the system development tools, right? The tools that you may use is that you use entity relationship diagram or ER diagrams. Uh -huh. um, before we talk about this class, um, okay, let me just have a poll first. Okay, just give me one minute. Uh -huh. Let me create a poll for you. Okay, here. Okay, let me start the poll for you first. I have. Okay, so everyone, cap, please just like um reply to the poll that you see on the Zoom screen for me. I just want to see. Okay. Um, for more of you, can you reply on my poll? Okay. So as far as I see right now, นะครับ. Okay. I close the poll in 20 seconds, นะครับ. The poll that I see right now, it seems like 15% of you took the database subject already. While the rest of you, around 85%, haven't taken um, the database course yet. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, the poll is closed. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is the result. Uh -huh. Just three of you, I guess um, you are the senior student for sure. Um, third year or fourth year student. Uh -huh. You took that database course already. Okay, so now let, let's come back to talk about our, our slides that have just one below. In this one, for entity relationship diagrams, normally we just like um, learn it in the database class. It just like talk about how do we gonna create Um, the tables and the relationship among different tables in your database. I have, okay, I'll, I don't go into details because some of you, most of you haven't studied this one yet. Uh, okay, then flowchart, pseudocodes. I have flowchart, pseudocodes. Flowchart doesn't display in this one. Pseudocode is like this I have that you learn already. I guess you learn already from um, both like um, computer fundamentals and also um, some of the programming uh, and also decision tables and decision trees. These tools can be used in order to represent your ideas uh, or your algorithm before you start coding your programs. Uh, 
um, this one นะครับ you may receive from the um, software design spec นะครับ in the designing phase first นะครับ once the system analyst prepare the um, data flow diagrams นะครับ normally they may generate this kind of um, flow charts or pseudo codes นะครับ from the case to software นะครับ or they may just like um, draw the flow charts by themselves decision trees and decision table uh, manually when the programmer receive this kind of um, algorithm already นะครับ or ideas of just um, coding the software already or the logic of the software already นะครับ you can just like use this one to convert it into the um, programming language that you have to use นะครับ in this one We need to have the project management too. The project management, I'll talk about in details on the last module, นะครับ of um this term, นะครับ that will be the next module. The project management that we have to do, นะครับ um even a modest sites project, it might have hundreds or even thousands of modules inside, นะครับ So um you can see that for the programs that you used to have that you code. In programming one or programming two, it might consist of 10 or 15 modules at most for your term project, or in your um in your senior project, it might consist around like let's say 50 or 70, 80 different uh, modules inside your program or in your project. But I mean like in the real information system, it consists of many parts. Okay. Inside in many process inside, so there are many users who are related to that information system. So they might have hundreds or even thousands of modules inside the programs. The important is to set realistic schedules. How long do you approximately use to code one module? You have to think of the project deadlines. You also have to control the cost and maintain the quality as well. Main, um, to sorry, to control the cost. What do I mean in this sense in terms of project management? Because the software house or the company has to pay you the salary. It means that whenever you have to work for them, even in one day, นะครับ even even in one day. They have to pay for you anyway, so that is their cost. That's why we have to control the cost as well because if you just like do it slowly, okay, and it delays the project, what will happen? The first one, the company has to pay you the money. The second one, okay, if you are working for the software house and you do it very slow, the software house will be charged, okay, or will be penalized by their customers. Because the customers need to use that information system in a specific period of time, right? So that's why the cost must be controlled. While the cost is controlled, you have to maintain the quality as well. Um, so we have to use the project management tools and techniques to help. That means, okay, um, we may use the software for the project management, and also we have to use project management techniques to know as well. That I mean, some cases. Some parts or some tasks might be delayed, but if you have to be delayed, how can you just like minimize the period of the delay as least as you can? Okay, we'll talk about in the project management part. So the next thing is that when you do the structured application development, you may have to prepare the structure chart. To tell us that what are modules that we have, นะครับ what are modules and sub modules, นะครับ and then um we have control module, subordinate or sub modules, นะครับ we have module we have data couple, control couple, condition and loop, นะครับ to be written in terms of the um structure charts like this, นะครับ apart from that one, we have to use cohesion and coupling. นะครับ we have to use cohesion and coupling if you need to make a module more cohesive you can split them into separate units with the specific function นะครับ and then um you may have um the technique that we call loosely couple and tightly couple 
นะครับ when you have the module designs นะครับ so that means in term of modular design in your programs how to break the big system into the smaller modules and sub modules you have to consider for these things as well loosely coupled tightly coupled because some modules might be reusable นะครับ you may have to design it as a loosely coupled with the main uh, with its um a uh, main module something like that the next one นะครับ um when you have to draw a structure chart นะครับ how do I, how can we do that the first step We have to review the DFD, นะครับ So um whenever you have to review the DFD, review all DFD carefully, นะครับ Review it for accuracy and completeness, นะครับ If you review and you found that okay, it's okay, it's accurate, everything is what um the users want already and it's completed already, นะครับ You have to know that some DFD they are correct, but they are not complete. Then you have to fill it up to complete. นะครับ Step number two, identify modules and relationships. How many modules and sub modules do you have? What are their relationship? We have to transform functional primitive or object methods into program modules. นะครับ So um when you have to design the chart, the structure chart, the structure chart may have like three levels. นะครับ Related to three DFD levels. What do I mean? I mean, like, if you have um, data flow diagrams for diagram zero, นะครับ um, diagram one, diagram two, let's say, you can uh, your structure charts must have um, three level as one, นะครับ to match, นะครับ with the three DFD levels. But if your DFD consists of two levels only, นะครับ so we we Don't count the context diagram, นะครับ because every system must have context diagram. That is a system name with its related um, external entities, นะครับ So in this case, suppose we have diagram zero and diagram one. The structure charts will have two level as well, นะครับ So for the first level of structure chart itself for diagram zero, second level of structure chart is used to serve diagram one, something like that, นะครับ The next one, นะครับ Step number three, you add couples, loops, and conditions. นะครับ In this part or in this step, you have to identify data elements that you pass from one module to another module. นะครับ For example, if one process of yours consists of two modules inside, นะครับ For example, the first module is logging in, second module is um like add a cost something like that. Do we have any data element that pass from the first module to second module or not? For example, once we log in and and we go to add a course already, in the add a course module, the data like user ID, นะครับ from the first module that you log in must be passed to the add module, นะครับ add the course module because once we just like create a program to add a course, we have to enter student ID, นะครับ In the course that we add as well, นะครับ because that one will be related to check the number of credits that the student can take, because um in order to check number of credits that the student can take will be related to the grades, the GPA of the students, and then we have to use student ID to check. So that's why the student ID has to pass from login module to another module, นะครับ in this case as an example. Step number four. Analyze the structure chart and data dictionary, นะครับ So that we know what we have to do, นะครับ Um, is it correct or not? Is it completed or not? นะครับ You have to analyze them. Um, for the structure chart, it is the way that we send the parameters, นะครับ Or, um, what to say? Variables from one module to another module. That must be correspond to the data dictionary that we created. นะครับ They have to go along together. After that, you ensure, นะครับ Um, in order to add couple loop and condition, because we want to ensure that, นะครับ Um, the data, sorry, we en we want to ensure that chart reflects all previous documentations, and that logic is correct, นะครับ So that's why you have to analyze structure chart and data dictionary. นะครับ
this is the way that we do if we just like use the structured application development or the waterfall model. After that, นะครับ if we don't use structured application development but we use object oriented application development, how can we do that? For object oriented development or OOD, นะครับ the characters of the characteristics of object oriented application development, นะครับ the application structure is represented by object model itself, นะครับ Um, for example, in here on the right-hand side, นะครับ this is the the sign of the um, object-oriented um, structured um, sorry the the structures of the object-oriented applications, นะครับ like in the registration record, we have fitness class schedule, office staff, instructor, นะครับ as the input, and we have fitness class and student as the output, while manager, office staff. Instructors, they are employees of the company. And in terms of fitness class, นะครับ we have instructor, registration card, and student as the input, นะครับ something like that. Okay, so นะครับ when we design the object oriented application already, นะครับ um in terms of implementing of object oriented design, นะครับ the main objective. Is to translate the object methods, นะครับ into program code modules, and also we determine what event or message will trigger the execution of each module, นะครับ So in object oriented um, application development, you need to have cohesion and coupling as well. For the class, นะครับ is um you have loosely coupled between or among different classes, while methods in the class. You may have loosely coupled and highly cohesive. Apart from the object-oriented application development, apart from the waterfall model, if you use agile application development, it is a distinctly different system development method from the traditional ones. Development team is in constant communication with the customer or users. For the agile development, it focuses on small teams, but each small team have intense communication, and also each of the people in the team must have rapid development iterations. That means you may have like one system analyst, one programmer, one user work together. นะครับ These must be um this small team must have intense communication. You may talk. Together for the whole day, นะครับ In order to come up with just like the development um um piece of program, and then you have to ask the users for the feedback and system analysts to just like update their spec or requirements, and after that you just like repeat doing it like this until you have bigger and bigger and bigger software, นะครับ Until you finish your part, um. So the newest agile methods is called as extreme programming, นะครับ So we also have like a course in extreme programming. Um, I think it might be a course in in our CS program as well, but it is just the elective course, นะครับ So um, this one is the way that you just like heavily, uh, focusing in just like intense communication and rapid development iterations that you may have to use some um techniques in order to do for the extreme programming. นะครับ while you are using the agile uh, method so an extreme programming example is like you may have like this kind of thing user story นะครับ user just tell us the story of their work นะครับ and then we have release plan นะครับ release plan when will let's say um edition one is launched when will edition one point one is launched When will edition two of the software is launched? Something like that, and then we just like talk about iteration cycles. Then you may have to think of the plan as well. That okay, the first cycle we launch uh, version one, นะครับ The next small cycle we launch um version one point one of the software. After that, in the next month we will launch um version two, นะครับ of this module. Something like that. That is iteration um cycle and iteration plan. And also, each iteration you need to have iteration planning meeting as well among your team. So when we talk about the extreme programming, apart from having a small team work together, 
the whole project actually it might consist of many small teams you must have the iteration planning meeting among team as well and then you have parallel programming that means team one team two team three perhaps you do the parallel programming while team one programmer is developing team two programmers is developing his or her own task as well and then you need to have test driven design because i mean like every round or every iteration or every cycle you need to test your program because once you finish testing and your testing is passed already you just go to the next cycle already you will not come back to the previous ones so that's why you have to make sure that all the work has been done properly before you just like go to the next cycle the future of agile development critics claim that it lacks discipline and produces system of questionable quality uh, because like we have like many small teams and each team work uh, by him or herself if the small team say that okay the quality is okay they move on so sometimes we say that okay in terms of the quality control uh, um, if we use software engineering uh, methods uh, the small team like this you can't control the quality for the whole big system something like that so that's why it's a questionable ones before implementing agile development the proposed system and development methods should be examined carefully first otherwise agile development may cause the may may cause the whole project to be failed so that's why you have to examine the proposed system and development method first and for agile development, one size fits our solution does not exist. So that means I can't tell you that how many people should be suitable for um, a small team in the agile. Some project, three people for one small team. Some project we need five, some project need four, some project need seven for one sub team, something like that. So you have to just like, um, who can tell us? Normally, the project manager, once you work with like um, your team for a long time and you just like see many users for a long time, you can estimate that okay for the capability of your team, of your programmers like this, and the capability of users once you communicate with them, you know that okay for this kind of people uh, with this capability, how long should um sorry how um how many people should they set up um for each team and how long should we spend in order to have one cycle uh, for the iteration after that we talk about the coding part in term of coding uh, um we have to think about the coding um uh, which which kind of programming language that we have to use think about the programming environments uh, so um, we need to know about the integrated development, like I, um, integrated development environment or IDE. Uh -huh. And then um, when you generate the code, uh -huh, um, this kind of IDE can generate editable program, editable program code directly from macros, keystrokes, or mouse action uh -huh, to get like the, the code directly. Uh -huh. So it depends um, which software that you are planning to use. Uh -huh. Somebody say that, okay, I used to study for R or Python or C++ already. But in the reality, when you have to really code the software, you may use Java. It might be depends on the requirement of the users. Or if the users doesn't have any special requirements, for example, they don't know anything much about like the way that they use, the system analyst can help evaluating the situation. Uh -huh. Also, the system analyst will just like um, evaluate uh -huh, the performance of the programmers, uh -huh, the knowledge of the programmers and the skills of the programmers. And then they may suggest the, um, the code that this team should use. Uh -huh. After you code the program already, uh -huh, according to the methods that we use for development and also according to the timeline that you set up in the project management uh, um, this is for testing the system uh, when you test the system uh, 
you need to have the unit testing, integration testing, and system testing. So what are they? Let's see in this diagram. Let's see in this diagram. Suppose we say that, okay, we separate the tasks into different programs or into different modules, into different modules. For example, um, let's say, suppose we have six modules or six programs together in our system, and we have two programmers who are responsible for this task. The first programmer might be responsible for program one, two, and three, while programmer two is responsible for program four, five, and six. What, what will happen? Unit testing means that once you finish program number one already, you test it. Normally we test or we test for sure for uh, when we write the program. So um, that is what we call unit tests. That means when the program is finished, the programmer tests that program, whether it's usable or not. Are there any errors or bugs or not? Are there anything wrong? Will it crash when this when this uh, when you run this program? What caused this um, program to be crashed and how can we fix it? Okay, that is just the program. Um, that is the unit test. You just test your, your program or your module that you are responsible only. After that, we have integration testing. Integration testing is the way that you join some modules together and then you do integration tests. For example, in this one, you can see that in the program one and program two, program one will send the output to program two and the program two also process something and send some flag back to program one. Okay, if I say that it's like this, then you run program one and program two together and send the data or send the output from program one as the input for program two. And program two runs and send the flag back to update at program one. Will they work correctly or not? This is what we call integration tests between different modules. Uh -huh. After that, for program two and program three, we don't need to um, test together because um, they don't send and receive any data. But program one and program three, uh -huh. program one once again send the output to program three. Program three process something that we obtain from program one and update some values back into program number one. Now, these two programs are related. You have to do integration tests between these two programs. If you run program one and then run program three, will the output be correct? Will program one and program three make each other crash or not? Because it's possible that for the unit test, it passed, there's no problem. But when you test like two um, programs together, sometimes the programs um, cause another program to be crashed. Uh -huh. Or sometimes when you do the program, um, the unit test of each program, uh -huh, it produces the correct output. But when it's sent to another program, the input from, I'm um, sorry, the input that we get as the output from another program might be wrong without any reasons. Then you have to test and see what happened. Sometimes because there is like the memory error. Uh -huh. So you may have to just like check first and then say, um, go back uh -huh, to fix the problem. If there is a problem in the integration test, how can we fix? The things that we have to do is that you have to just like response to the programmers who is responsible for the unit that um, to the program that has the error. For example, if programmer A is responsible for program one, two, and three, uh, program, uh, programmer A has to check that, okay, program one has got an error that is caused by program three uh, during the integration test. Then they have to go back and fix program one. And once they fix already, if the fixation related to the result of the program number one 
programmer has to test for unit tests of program one once again before they start doing integration tests at the second time. So, because I mean like, normally when you just like fix the problem, you don't fix the whole program. You just fix a part of it only. If it is not related to the um, output that uh, reflects to other, um, other programs, for example, it related to the uh, error of program three only, but it's not related to program two. At that one, you rerun the integration test between program one and three only. Okay, now that's finished for the first part for programmer number one. Now, we talk about programmer two, that is um, Mr. B, let's say. Mr. B is responsible for program four, five, and six. So once Mr. B finish each program, he has to test the unit test of each program. That is unit test for program four, program five, and program six. After each unit test is passed, Mr. B has to test the integration between his program four and program two. Program two was from programmer A. He has to check whether the input that program four received from program two, when they run together already, does it cause any problems? After that, programmer B has to test the integration test between program two and program five. When program five send the input into, send the output of program two as the input of program five, does it cause any error? If no, okay, that means integration test is passed. If it's cause the error, the things that he has to do is that he has to check and inform programmer A who is responsible for program two that, okay, the data that you send to program five cause the error because I want, let's say, the cost ID to my program five, but you don't send, you um, the value that you send is a now value. Okay? So please go back to check program two. Once programmer A check for program two already, we run, we rerun the integration test between program two and program five once again. Okay? So we do the same thing with program three and program six. Okay? After program six is test for its unit test already, we have to check for the integration test between program three and program six. If it doesn't have the error, that means the integration test is passed. Okay? But if it's wrong, okay, you have to test it once again. Okay? So in this one, in this one, who tests it? For unit tests and integration tests, okay, this kind of testing must be done by programmers. Okay? Before we talk about the, the, the last part, okay, we talk about system testing. Once all of the unit tests okay, are all done and correct, and integration tests are done, are performed and correct already, everything is correct already, then we do the system testing. What is system testing? System testing means you test everything together. Okay? For example, if you say that program number one okay, is logged in, program number four is printing the grade, program number five is issue the um, class roster. Program number six is payment to the bank. So you have to run from um, locking into the system until printing the grade um, transcript or grade report, um, printing the class rosters and also um, payment. Once you check every single programs or single modules together and everything runs correctly, okay, logically, that means the system test is finished. You should regard thorough testing as a cost effective means providing a quality product. Okay. So all of the testing in this page, unit testing, integration system um, testing and system testing normally, all of these tests are done by programmers. Okay. You may ask the system analyst to help you. Okay to prepare the step of testing. But sometimes the programmers may not know that programming language. For example, I'm sorry, not programmers, no, doesn't know. 
system analyst might not know that programming language. For example, I myself, okay, um, for the programming language in this generation, I know Python, I know C++, but I don't know Java. So that means if the programmers decide, if you are my programmers in, the, my, in my team, you say that, okay, this system, this information system should be developed by using um, what to say Java. So I will not take part in the system testing because I don't know about Java. But you may ask me that, okay, if this caused a problem, I see from the context, I'm sorry, I, I see from the diagram, the structured diagram of your system, and I, I can tell you that what's wrong with it and how to fix, how to cut this problem off. Okay? How can we minimize the problem? But the last part of testing, okay? this is not included in this one because it is not our part. The last part is what we call user's acceptance test. User's acceptance test, okay? or UAT. User's acceptance test that will be done by the users. For the user's acceptance test, I will talk about it on the next class okay? and tell you that who will do it and how can we do the user's acceptance test okay? and when do we have to perform the user's acceptance test and how can we call it as it's passed or not passed. Okay? okay then, so up to this point, do you have any questions, Kap? Okay, so if you don't have any question, I'm just wondering. So um, on tomorrow and Saturday, who will come to join the open house? Who? Napat, who will join? Right? Anybody else will help joining the, the open house? Pongamon, okay, that's good. You will see me. Okay, that's good because I go to I'll go to the open house every day. Okay? But um I will just like go in the afternoon only. If you want to see me, just see this together in the afternoon. Oh Asher will go too. That's good, Asher. I haven't seen you for I think almost 10 years already, Asher. I saw you when you were like in um what to say grade two or grade three only more than 10 years that we haven't met each other. So I think some of you, I have seen you before. Maybe you are the friend of my niece on a field. Okay. So, okay then, everyone, not a day goes by without thinking about our share. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's good. Good friends. Okay then, everyone, before you finish, before we finish the class, so um, please turn on your camera, have everyone have. Okay. Okay, na have everyone. So um, you have a nice day, na have. We will meet each other. For some of you, we meet each other tomorrow or Saturday, na have. While wow, the whole class we meet each other on the next Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Okay, then have a nice day. Take care and stay safe. Bye bye, everyone. Have a nice lunch time. Bye bye.